We've heard some Tavor stuff, we've heard lots of surgery stuff, and if we think 43 versus 45 millimeter is a controversy, let's spend, see what next 10 minutes bring. So the title, Lifetime Management of Aortic Stenosis, and we're, we're talking about this with Kim yesterday. Kim Holst, can you stand up for a second, please? Yeah. So everybody, please see Kim. Uh, she's a superstar. She's, I don't want to call her fellow. She's a cardiac surgeon, but be, beyond superstar fellow. She's spending a year with us, uh, and she'll be playing a vital role at Mayo Clinic Rochester when she goes there next year as a hybrid IC surgeon there. So she corrects me yesterday that shouldn't it be life management? It's not just getting a patient in 90. It's how do you manage their life day to day? So that's actually very valid. And Kim, I'm going to use this life management title from now on all the time. So, but before we get into that, let's just look at this 78 year old with NYHA4 symptoms. And the image on the right shows you three valves already in place. There is a surgical valve, then there is a sapient valve, and then there is a core valve done that was by transcaval axis. Each of these lasted about, you know, four, five, seven years. And that guy is back in your clinic, like, I'm short of breath. I cannot do anything. Save me. And the first discussion is hospice. Like, you know, how many times are we going to do this? He's not a surgical candidate, even by our best surgeons. Um, and the guy is like, give me four more years. I know it's going to fail in four years. Give me four more years. He's severe aortic stenosis, very symptomatic. And he says that a year ago I was fine. It's just that now that my echo is terrible, I'm starting to develop MR and getting severe AS. And by the way, I don't have access. Just in that blue box you, or blue circle, you can see the plug from the previous transcaval axis. Okay, so after a lot of discussion, we said, okay, since you had transcaval last time, we have nice landmarks, let's just burn right above it. So we do a redo transcaval, put a sheath in, just conscious sedation, do a fourth valve in. So one surgical and a three taver with two transcaval accesses. This is the future of uh, valve disease, I think. And then the future is you take, Jim, you take all of these four out and you put a saver in. That's the surgery we'll be doing in future. Let's look at this patient, 31 year old Vivek, Dr. Rajkopal sitting here, um, who's taught me most of the things that I do in the lab these days. He saw this patient, 34 week pregnant, bioprosthetic aortic stenosis with a small trifecta valve, mean gradient 86, that not too long ago was very low. Now we can say, well, pregnant patients, high volume, and you know they tolerate aortic stenosis just fine. Yes unless they are short of breath and dizzy and terribly symptomatic. Now you start getting into the discussion, okay, do we need to prematurely deliver the baby? And all the complications surrounding that. And by the way, once you induce and she arrests, can you do a bailout tavern? As like, not when you're doing CPR. So we did an extensive, extensive discussion, multidisciplinary P team, I didn't know who else to call, like we got everybody available that day in the hospital to sit together and say like, how do we do this safely? And ultimately what ended up, we took her to the hybrid OR and we did the tower together along with uh, neonatology or cardiac anesthesia, pediatrics, OB, like everybody there just on standby. The plan went nicely, just conscious sedation. Somebody was holding her hand and talking to her while Vivek was getting access and we got Tavor done, she was discharged uneventfully, completed her term, and delivered on time with no prematurity. So can I just make a comment on that case? Um, if you go back, she had a 21 valve put in at the age of 25. That should never happen in modern America. Period, end of discussion. That was, that set her up for now four to five procedures. At that point, she should have probably had a Ross procedure mm -hmm. um, and it, because she's a childbearing age or she should have had a root enlargement and a 25 or something else put in. So True. I would say that we, we have to find a better pathway for surgeons and not to put a, a 21 valve in a 25 year old woman. That is just an absolute sin. Um, and now she's gonna pay you the price for that for the, the rest of her life. 
Um, and by the way, that, that I think that's the stuff that pretty we have to figure out better in the U.S. So it is a 25-year-old college student, right? So severe ES, moderate AI, congenital bicuspid, valvuloplasty at age 17, did f fine for several years, and now back, very symptomatic, very, very symptomatic. But she's aware, she has Google, so she Googles everything, and Tavor comes up, right? But should you even think of Tavor, or should we just think of, your mechanical valve, we just heard less than 60, we should just get mechanical valve, be done with it. But then she says, want to have kids. Uh, so Trent, I'm gonna put you on the spot. So Does what do you tell her, 25 year old? Does she have pulmonic insufficiency? No, no other issues, isolated aortic valve. I'd, Aorta I'd, is fine. R refer for Ross. Refer for Ross, okay. If she'll go. Yeah, so I, I've tried to do that and had people not go. But. What, what would you do? Yeah, that's, that's what I thought of. I'd, I'd send her to Jim, see if you want to do a Ross procedure. Yeah. So we'll get into how to think about this and what we did. And, and let's think. So mechanical valve, we're agreeing that if she wants to have kids, let's not do mechanical valve, right? We at least brought it up to her. We said, look, if you get mechanical, yes, kids are an issue, but it's good for lifetime. But let's talk about either Ross or Sever. We did not talk about Ross. We talked to her about tissue valve. And we said, if you get a first surgical tissue valve, you can have your kids. Second surgery could be 10 to 15 years. And whether you get Ross, even if you get Ross, you're pushing that second surgery down the line. May not be 10, may be 20, but she will need a second surgery then. And that could be either mechanical or tissue. Then you're good for lifetime. Is it too crazy to think about a Tavor valve for her? If the anatomy is straightforward, she gets a Tavor, 10 more years. If the anatomy is right, second Tavor, and then she can get a mechanical valve. Or at, at that second procedure state, you could think about uh, surgery with mechanical valve. So different, what is the advantage? She can have the kids, she still has one surgery in her lifetime, potentially less cumulative bleeding in her lifetime. Anticoagulation does cumulate over time. She chose option number three, right? We talk about heart team. Who is the centerpiece of any heart team? The patient. We sometimes forget, but patient is the critical piece. We can tell her all the data. We can draw her the lifestyle, but patients are going to choose what they want. Here is a little more right in the middle that we see. 55-year-old, severe AS, aorta is not dilated. Again, Trent, I'm, I'm going to come to you. Sever or sever mechanical, sever tissue. I talked to, I mean, shared decision making and patient preference. I mean, I would push him for a mechanical once in a while. Like I had a military guy who had to pass a PT test and couldn't and couldn't be on a mechanical for that. Who was a very healthy guy otherwise. And I think I put a tissue in him, but I'd push him pretty hard for an onyx otherwise. I think. So, uh, would you offer a Tavor? Is that your routine? Like religiously, we say less than sixty. I'm going to offer you. I know you don't want, even though your first statement was no mechanical. I'm still going to give you an option to get mechanical. Do we as religiously offer Tavor to those patients? I mean, if there's a reason to, if their lifespan, expected lifespan is less than 10 years or there's something else going they're on. They're gonna live, yeah. So here is what we do typically in the clinic and our way to think about it. We say, okay, you're 55. For the ease of math, let's just say all the tissue valves are gonna last 10 years, just for math simplicity. They may last 10 to 15, but let's say surgical or Tavor. Tissue valve will last 10 years. Mechanical, sure, it takes you down through your life. If you get first sever with a tissue valve in that middle column, if we focus, you can get, at 65, you can get a valve in valve. That's probably it. You, very likely, you're not gonna be her first case I showed you with four valves. Very likely, you may need a second surgery at around age 75, and then you can get another valve in valve and hopefully, you know, that's it. On the other hand, if you start off on that 55 with a tower, if especially if it's a larger size tower, it's not, is it too crazy to think about tav in tav at 65 or sever? And then if you do a tav in tav, then at 75, you could think about 
first surgery and then valve and valve down the line, still getting one sternotomy. I mean, I agree with Trent here that that I would you know, at 55, I would I would try to talk the patient into a mechanical valve, yep. right? If they are resistant, and I have to be honest with you, more than 50% of patients are resistant to that. Um, then for me, if they're getting a tissue valve, I don't I don't mind at all with column number one. Um, I just took a 75. No, the lady I just took from Savannah was 78 years old. Mm-hmm. Uh, right, Kim? I think she was 78. She was 78. She had a prior core valve, failed four years later. We did her. She went home, I think, day five or six. Um, it was difficult, Jim, but she did fine. Um, and she went home. And so for me, if it's a tissue valve, then I'm, I have full equipoise in column number two because I feel comfortable taking a TAVR valve out and putting a surgical valve in them, even though the mortality nationally is 10%. Let me say about for a, a surgeon like me in the more rural area. Yeah, that is rural. A, Athens is pretty well, good. What I'm, the point I'm going to make is the taking a TAVR valve out and putting in a SAVR is not the same operation as a primary straightforward aortic valve operation. No, so, but I, I would say that a second surgical valve replacement in that patient is also not trivial, right? I mean, because they're, they're ingrown in just like the other ones are, right? Wouldn't you say, Colin? Yes. There's no endocarditis. They're grown in there, and you have to chase the pledgets down and things That's like right. that. But So my cross clamp time, I think, Kim, when we did that together, normally is about 45 minutes for an isolated AVR. Our cross clamp time was, what, 60? 65. So you're right. It took longer to take that valve out, the TAVR valve out, than it, it's like a redo AVR, Colin. You know, but but I think it's doable. I think we we can teach that across the country. But so you would choose column two for that, Colin? Then that previous slide. Might have to go back to if you want to to see yeah. the. Uh, yeah. yeah well, I, the, the other there's some nuance here, of course. With, of course. With, but you know, some I've made the mistake of putting in a, a biologic valve in, in the 50 year old patient, thinking I was doing the right thing with these better biologic valves. I think there's impact with these patients, the 55 year old with the metabolic syndrome, the large obese patient with risk factors. I've had them degenerate in three to four years faster under five any years. of those things under five years and they come back and I've regretted. And so I'm putting in more mechanical valves. In this, in this age group than I was and before. I, I would argue that you need the CT scan available before you have this discussion because we can predict if TAV and TAV is going to be even feasible or not based on sinus depth, height of the STJ. So some of this, some of this I think you, you, we, we have the ability with aorta sizes and with, with some of the, the nuances of sizing to, to predict what, what's going to be feasible, what's not. I think one thing we'll probably discuss, this all comes down to all this flow charts, durability of valve. What is the durability of the current valves is the biggest issue. Yeah. I think I'm sure we'll discuss I think this. the TAVR trials yep. will show the real data about the surgical valve durability beyond three to five years. And actually the core valve low risk three year data looks very promising where if anything, the TAVR gradients were superior to the surgical valve. Now, obviously, time will tell whether that holds true for five or 10 years. But just to wrap up, this is the same slide that I showed you, just the previous one. This is an actual clinic visit from our clinic visit where we talked to this patient, drew the three pathways, just like this is how your life is going to be. Our recommendation based on our guideline is mechanical valve. But if you choose to go towards a tissue valve, these are the two options. And, and quite honestly, we are, at least I am, and same way Vinu and Jim and others here are, as long as the anatomy is okay, it has to be perfect and patient preference, TAVR is not the absolute crazy idea. So in conclusion, heart team is definitely important, but don't forget the patient. Just think, you know, what, what, is, their, what is their vision of their future? And no one therapy or guideline can fit all, like less than 50, everybody sh- should get a mechanical valve. Depends. Personalized care to each patient. Um, and I'll stop there.